As you can see, I'm juggling two tennis balls. The third item is a mini PC that runs Windows 11. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Yes, so it survived my juggling antics. Hey there, I'm uh, Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be talking about this Pico PC, a very, very tiny PC that has uh, eight gigs of RAM and it has a quad core processor and it's got lots of USB. It's got built in SSD, Wi Fi, and it runs Windows 11. So, if you've been following the stories here about Windows 11 on this channel, you'll know that none of the PCs in my house are eligible for the Windows 11 upgrade. Most annoyingly, my Ryzen 5 1600 machine, which has got three monitors and two SSDs and 24 gigs of memory, but it's not able to run Windows 11. And that's what I edit these videos on. However, this little Pico PC does work with Windows 11 because it has an Intel Celeron J4125, which is nowhere near as powerful as my main uh, desktop. However, it's on the supported CPU list. And so I've been testing out this PC with Windows 11, and this is what I found out. So let's start by looking at the ports on this little machine. There are some at the front, some at the back. On the back, you've got a USB-C, which provides the power. You've got HDMI and two USB ports, as well as a headphone jack. On the front, you've got a little on-off button, a little uh, S micro SD card slot, and then two more uh, USB ports. And one thing you'll notice lacking there is an Ethernet connector. So this a little PC only connects via Wi-Fi and it supports 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 5. Then on the inside, you've got that Celeron processor. You've got some RAM. My model has eight gigabytes. And then you've got a small SSD, again, available in different sizes. So turning our attention, first of all, to the processor, it's a Celeron processor, part of the Gemini Lake Refresh, which is a set of processors from Intel specifically aimed at low power uses. So you're looking at laptops, Chromebooks, and devices like this. That means it's not the fastest device out there. However, for desktop productivity work, even for light gaming, it will work without any problems at all, but don't expect it to break any speed records. Just to help you understand why a Gemini Lake processor will be slower, it's actually it's maxed out at 10 watts, whereas a i5, i7 might be 45 watts, might be 65 watts, even some of them go over 100 watts, 125 watts. So you can see that the amount of power this thing draws is very, very small, but of course that is relative to the amount of performance it can achieve. This process does include a built-in GPU, a built-in GPU from Intel itself, the UHD 600. Again, not the world's fastest GPU, enough for your desktop experiences for sure. Uh, will do some light gaming, and it does support DirectX 12, which of course from a specification from Windows 11 point of view is a great thing. Now, eight gigabytes of RAM, as I have in my test version, works absolutely fine for desktop stuff. Opening multiple apps, that won't be a problem. There is a four gigabyte version. You just have to choose between how much you want to pay and how much RAM you want in your machine. There's also built-in storage. This comes in the form of an M2 SSD. It's not the world's fastest one. I compared it to the other machines that I have here. It's just about the same speed as a SATA drive SSD that I have in my main desktop. A little bit slower, maybe. 10% uh, slower, and it isn't as fast, particularly in terms of read, on the very fast M2 one that I have in my main desktop. Way, way faster though than an actual hard drive. So overall, considering the price and how small this PC is, the uh, internal storage is just great. Now the specifications aren't really the main thing about this PC, it is its size and therefore its flexibility. A few of the use cases for it would be of course setting up as a second PC, maybe someone is doing online learning, maybe someone needs access occasionally to uh, another PC and you don't want to have it take up a whole bunch of space with a small monitor, a keyboard mouse, you can put this away into a corner and it's very, very usable. And of course, because of its size, it's also very portable. That means if you wanted to take it on the road, for example, with a portable HDMI monitor, and I have a review of a great HDMI monitor here on this channel, I'll leave a link in the description below, you can now sort of unpack the monitor, uh, get out this little PC, connect up to the USB-C, mouse and keyboard, and you're kind of set up with a desktop uh, environment. So that's a really good way of actually taking this uh, on the road with you. And again, also the portability means it doesn't have to stay in one place in the house. If you need it in different rooms at different times, it's the one that you can get out and just use it as you want. The same people are also working on a Pico projector. So when you combine it with a Pico PC, this is a way of kind of getting that cinema effect in a very portable setup. Just connect up these little boxes, uh, cables, and there you are with a kind of a cinema effect on a wall because of the projector and this Pico PC. 
just want to talk about gaming for a moment. This thing is capable of doing gaming. For example, here I am running Fortnite. And as you can see, it's not the world's best graphics. It does have a little bit of jitter occasionally and lag. However, it does actually play the game because if you were playing 2D gaming of any kind, then it would handle that without any problem whatsoever. As I said, it does run Windows 11, and the whole time I've been using it is with Windows 11. Uh, it's, therefore, it's got the TFT, it's got Secure View, it's got the right kind of processor. Windows 11 ran absolutely fine. The Windows checking tool ran on it absolutely fine. You've got all the new things that come with Windows 11, including the new Microsoft Store and the way of arranging the Windows and so on. So it really was a great experience. Now, this is sold to be going with Windows 10, because obviously at the time of making this video, Windows 11 is not out. However, I'm telling you it's future proof, so that you will know that if you do invest in it now, you will be able to upgrade to Windows 11 later on, which is a big plus nowadays. Talking of buying it, if you do buy one, it's currently, as at the time of making this video, there's a few days left of a Kickstarter project. You can go over there and get it, and then of course it will be sold uh, online after that. It starts at just $150, depending on the configuration that you want. Okay, so if you're interested in the Kickstarter project, there will be a link in the description below. And then below that, you'll find the comments section. Why not tell me in the comments what you think you would do if you had a Pico PC, such a small portable device like this that can run Windows 11, full Windows 11 desktop without any problem. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumb up. If you like this kind of video, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget I have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, tap in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.